Hello everyone, this is Chris from Mukrake and this is MIDI Surf, a new browser-based uh, MIDI controller that I've made that's highly customizable, optimized for a range of different devices. You can install it as an, like an app on your, your smartphone and best of all, it's completely free. So uh, you, all you need to do is go to midisurf.app and you can start using it now. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it and how to set it up and configure it to do anything that you want for your device. All sorts of different configurations with sliders and faders and all sorts of different things. Okay, so um, first of all, before I start that, um, it, like I said, it's completely free, but if you would like to support the development, you're welcome to do so. There is a link in my uh, in the, the description down below to my Patreon. You can join our community where we're, you know, developing these things and you can, you can input in the process and try out betas and things like this. Uh, also, there is a link to coffee as well. If you don't want to make a regular, you know, just want to give a one-off donation, uh, you can buy me a coffee there. But of course, like I said, no obligation. It's totally free, um, but it would help support to uh, continue to make uh, more more applications like this. Right, so when I was chatting, I was setting up this phone focus. There we go. Right, nice one. So it is a um, an Android-based phone. And again, I've just went to MIDI Surf to app. I've connected it with USB-C here. And now uh, I didn't need to set this up to say that it was mid to send MIDI across because I've done it before on this phone. Um, but you you might need to you might need to pull down menu and say, okay, my USB device, I want to save MIDI. So so you can see everything works as you would expect. And in fact, you can press this button at the top in the menu, the connections menu, and then you can see, well, these are all the devices that are connected and you've got input and output to the OPZ. So if there's problems, you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, now it runs on uh, most most modern browsers, anything that's Chrome based, so Chrome, Chromium, uh, Vivaldi, Brave, uh, Inter uh, Microsoft Edge, which is running on this one, just for demonstration purposes. Um, so it'll work on anything that's sort of Chrome-based. Make sure that your browser is up to date if you're having problems. It works with Firefox on desktop, but it, you need to install, install an extra extension, which is actually made by um, by the, the makers of Firefox themselves. However, it, it, you know, it'll give you a warning and tell you that there's a problem with this. Uh, it's not me that's doing that. It is literally Firefox that's, that, that's doing that. Um, I imagine if you wait a bit longer, it'll be in pretty much all browsers. It's not currently in Safari. So sorry, Apple people, you'll need to use a, a different browser if you currently use Safari. Um, okay, so uh, one other thing to mention, if, you, if you're if you using it on a device and you want to use it like a like an app, you can. it's a, called a progressive web app and you can actually install it. So you click install app in the menu there. And again, make sure your browser's up to date if you don't see these types of options. And then you can drag it to a place. And then we can go on here and you can see Here's MIDI surf here, and it's like a full sort of full screen app. Uh, obviously, it's all responsive and all uh, turn around and you know fit to your screen. Um, and then the nice thing about this is that if we put on airplane mode, so there's no internet now, and then we get rid of it and we go back in and load it up, then it'll start quite the thing. And there. It'll still work fine, right? That's the really cool thing about progressive web apps, that like you don't need to be connected to the internet to get it to work. And you can actually do it on Windows as well. Uh, I imagine you can probably do it on like iPads and stuff too. Right, so let's get back and show you how to customize it and set things up to do all sorts of different stuff. Right, okay, so here we go. This is what you'll see when you, you load up for the first time. And uh, the, basically the UI consists of um, this menu bar at the top, which you can you can hide this. Um, the these are pages, which are different groups of sort of controls that you can set up, and you can make as many pages as you like, and you can save and store them for later. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and then you've got things like notes, right? And then as well, CC messages. Now I've got set up here. Um, do I have? Oh yeah. Let me just make sure they're all. So this is sending CC message, you can also send CC messages out and I'm sending a, a message to the OPZ to mute the kick if I press the mute button and then unmute it again. And so, you know, there's lots of complex functionality on something like the OPZ or other groove boxes, uh, which is hidden in lots of menus. Normally how I'd have to do that is hold down this button and then mute that manually, right? But I can mute and unmute it here automatically without having to go into that menu. So that's really, really handy to get to all the features. Um, and we can, if we click this edit button, this little pencil, if you press it once, then if you click on something, you can edit it. And after you go out, after you've made an edit to it, so this time I've not made an edit, but it'll automatically close. If you press it twice, it'll stay open. So you can edit multiple things. It'll just stay in edit mode for a while. So if you get stuck in edit mode, just press it again and that's what will happen. 
we can see what, how these are set up. So you can see that this is a CC value. It's just a, a, like a, a single CC value. It's got the control number 53, and I found that out from the OPZ manual, uh, and then a value of one that is, corresponds to mute, and you can set the color and other things, and uh, you can see that um, unmute is zero. It's the same, same, same uh, control number set to the channel. Channel one is this this year. So you need to do a little bit of looking through your manual to find out what, what these things are. But actually, there's a very quick way to add things, and I'll show you that in a little second. Um, and then, of course, as well, we've got, we've got other things. We've got faders. So let me uh, move on to this one. Um, oh, I've messed with this before. So you've got a little helper for making isomorphic keyboards, and that is, uh, they have this grid layout which, where the notes are staggered. And the really cool thing about isomorphic keyboards is that the same shape will make the same chord regardless of what key you're in. So if we're in C, that's a nice major triad, right? And if we go to, let's say that we're in B, then if we do the same thing, same shape, it's still a major chord, right? If we do that in C, and there's a tool specifically for making isomorphic keyboards, right? Like, so you can set like the velocity of the whole thing. And after you've made it, you can customize the velocity of notes if you wanted to change individual notes. Um, the channel, the number of rows, the, the offset, which I'd recommend five, this is what I'm using here, that's what I'm used to, but you can try any offset you like, and row length. So depending on the size of your device, you can make bigger or smaller isomorphic keyboards. And then we've got some faders. Right, I'm controlling the filter here. If we go to, you can see here, if you look at the orange parameter, the LED, uh, sorry, the yellow parameter, if you look at the LED, it's changing. And then let's say that we want to change the envelope. Well, what's that changing? Well, it's on another page here in this, and this is why it's so good for sort of groove box type devices. So now you have a direct access to the whole, any parameters that you want. And you can only take the ones, you can take the ones that are relevant. So in the OPZ, for example, there are four pages of parameters for each track, right? There's a huge number of different parameters. These ones, some of them have less, but most of them have sort of four sets of parameters. So there's lots of things to control. Let's let's give an, a sort of concrete example of making a new one. So we could edit this one here, and this blank one is just so that people know that you can edit it, right? But we can also just add a new one here. So if I press new, and then I'm going to say call this tape, right? And add the page. And you can see it's completely empty just now. And if I press edit again, and we're going to be doing a bunch of edits, so I'll put it into this hold mode for the edit. And I click this, then we can start adding things. Now, what I want to do, I have a little loop here. Okay, and I want to be able to mess up, mess it up with the tape track here. This is like a continuous buffer that's recording and you can sort of slice it um, and chop it up and change the play speed of it. It's quite fun. So if we go into um, column, you can see here that um, it has this listening for MIDI and it will actually detect MIDI notes and add those to the column, but we're not gonna do that just now. What we're gonna do is add a bunch of spaces. So we're gonna say four spaces, right? And we've got four spaces here because we're gonna have four rows of parameters. Let's go to the tape track. And um, we don't need to know we don't need to know what the uh, the MIDI messages are or anything because we can actually just sort of record it live or train it. Um, so let's make a row to fill this up and let's add these parameters here. So let's see. Um, this is parameter one. So you've got to be careful. It will add them multiple times. I don't want to stop people adding things multiple times in case it was a useful thing and I just hadn't thought why that would be uh, a useful thing. So let's do the first page and then the second page as well. Oh. Got to do row. It's listening for MIDI 13, 14, 15, and 16. So you can see it's pretty quick to add stuff. And then let's make this row all of the, the black keys, which change the length of the, the sort of slice that you're taking out of the buffer. Uh, well, we need to go to row first. Great. So now you do this. Boom, we've got all this. When you add notes like this, it'll automatically color them light gray if they are white keys, uh, dark gray if they are black keys, and uh, blue if they're middle if they're C. Um, so that's just to make it a bit easier if you're making a sort of keyboard. But of course, you don't need to use that. You can go in and change and modify all the colors afterwards by yourself. Let's So you can see here, I mean, it's so much fun. I love the tape loop, especially when you stopped it like this and you can actually, it sort of behaves predictably. Now we need to get out of edit mode there, right? I pressed that and it went back in, but actually we go this and we can get out of edit. So 
so, so cool. Um, and you can change the length with these ones. And you can change the speed. Right, if you want to get a bit of hang back on it and, and slow it down. Those are pretty cool to be honest. Um, and then you can add effects to it as well. These are but the second parameters. And this is reverb that's on it, which is why it's sounding all spacey and stuff. Um, this is delay, I think. Yeah. So again, you've got access to all of these, but you can be in, say that you want to be You want to be in changing things in this. Well, it's not sort of recording the buffer just now, but if you were you wanted to play your bass whilst you're doing it, uh, or maybe you go to the tape and then you say, well, you don't want the bass to be affected by the tape loop. And then I think we should hear it. It's a bit quiet. Let's... So you could play I don't know what key we're in for this to be honest. Um, so you can you, you can see how it could be useful, right? Especially in a performance setting where you want lots of controls and they're all buried in different menus. And things like the mutes, for example, play and pause, uh, start, you, you can actually do automate those as well uh, for the OPZ, but I don't have the correct MIDI message for that. That will be added in a future update though. So I think that's kind of, that's quite, a, oh, one more thing, one more thing to show you before I go. There's also this save feature, right? So let's say that I love this tape and I want to be able to use it again. Um, or actually, you know what, let's say the synth. The synth is very handy and I want to save it and use it again. So there we go, I've saved it now. And if I delete this, it will go away. But there's also another trick it has. If I add it and I load the page, so that's this one that I saved, right? I can also change the channel. Now this was um, the lead, so it was uh, channel uh, six. And let's change it to seven where it's the ARP. And now everything, although it says channel six up here, we can change that, uh, edit and see, isomorphic channel uh, seven, and then click OK, and you can see. And then we go back to this one. Let's rename it as ARP or something, so that it doesn't get as confusing. And let's go over to this one. You can see that's the the lead, and then. And it's all there. It's all there for you to use and play around with. So it, you know, you can you can make anything you want. So obviously, it doesn't just work for the OPZ. It works for any any uh, device that will accept MIDI. It can be like a traditional synthesizer, you know, sampler, anything like that, as long as it accepts MIDI, and you can control it in all sorts of different ways. So that is MIDI stuff. I hope that you enjoy using it. I had a, I had fun making it. It was a long process, but um, uh, it's uh, if you're interested in the code that's running, the source code is available. It's open source, and that, there's a link to that in the description. It's written in a language called Elm, which compiles down to JavaScript. And like I said, th you know, thank you so much for watching, and and, and please, you, you know, use the app and, and tell me if you if you find it useful and what features it's missing, like what crucial things it's missing. I have a lot of things that I want to add. Like, for example, I've forgotten them now. Um, being able to send for, uh, um, uh, like, toggle. So toggle something on and off. I'm going to add sort of toggle switches, X, Y controllers, rather than just faders. We're gonna, I'm going to add some X, Y controllers there as well. Um, and all sorts of different different devices as well, different modes. Most importantly as well, and a way to export and to share your, your layout. So there isn't currently a method to do that. Not an easy method. There is technically a method to do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But I'm going to make it much easier, actually, being able to share the layout of a page or a module uh, using uh, a, a URL. So that's cool. So if you want to get involved in the process of development, um, go and check out the Patreon and you can join there um, and, and, and you know, request features and things like this or, or, or give me a, a tip on coffee. And, more, you know, if you're interested in any other music technology stuff, like and comment and subscribe to the channel. And I, I talk about music technology. I also had a video recently that was about MIDI and a MIDI spec, which I was getting into because I was making this. And you can go and find out what are MIDI messages and how they work and how can you program with them. So great. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy it and let me know how you get on.